Southern University, but Alcorn balancing things out. 158 yards in the first quarter as compared to Alcorn's 14. But then after two quarters, 291 for Southern and 180 for Alcorn. And where it really counts on the scoreboard, a four-point game. Santoria, we are off to Birmingham, Alabama on Friday. Swag Digital Network bringing you live coverage of Mississippi Valley and Howard University. Should be an interesting ball game. As a matter of fact, Howard will be in North Louisiana tomorrow. They'll play against, uh, make their first trip ever to Grambling State University tomorrow, noon game there. So catch it at Grambling tomorrow, but on SDN next Friday. Kick to Warford, and Warford will gather it in at the goal line. Bring it out to the 15, cut it to the 20. And he'll get to the 23, and that's where Alcorn will take over first down and 10. All right. I know it's redundant. We hear it in game coverage just about every game. But how important is this opening drive of the second half for Alcorn? That's a, it's a, it's a, a way to set the tone here. And I think that they, especially the way that uh, things ended in the first half, with them being able to find a little bit of an offensive groove, I think they need to continue on to that coming up uh, here in this drive. And, uh, you know, they have to use Footman again. DeLance Turner has been a beast. When you look at what he was able to do, halftime numbers for him, he had seven carries for 71 yards in that first half. So, you know, they got to go back to him a little bit more. And how about, you know, Footman, two for eight, 17 or 24 yards? Very unfootmanlike. like Yeah. And off to Turner. Turner across the 25. He'll get a couple of yards. And, well, then, Pass of humanity still going, and right in the middle of it is Turner, but he just won't go down. They, and they were they were going to blow the whistle yet because he wasn't going down. So Footman gets about what five yards just by sheer will. And here's Turner once again bouncing to the outside, and Champion just everybody there just trying to get him down, and he just won't go down. His center of gravity just held him up and held him up, and there we get five yards out of it. Footman across the 30. He will dive to the 32. Where it'll be third and short. That's what you want here if you're Alcorn State University. Third down and short to where you don't have to depend on a long pass or a pass at all if you don't want to. You could legitimately here, if the way that Turner's been running, you could get a, a good run here on third down. Third down and a couple. Warford who... Number seven in the nation for all-purpose yards, but he's been held relatively quiet in this one. You take a look at his first-half numbers, you just don't see much. Kick returns, three of them for 46 yards, but otherwise quiet. Turner's not been quiet. Midfield goes to Lance. And we got a player down on the field right now for Alcorn State. Well, and we're trying to see who that is, and the only number I don't see accounted for yet is 17. Nope, that's an offensive lineman. 17 apparently has, there he is, getting from behind one guy and out in front of us. So it is an offensive lineman who has gotten injured. It is 73, Chris McCray. He's, you know, compared to some of the defensive linemen, Footman is small compared to the offensive lineman. He could hide behind a couple of guys with no problem. <laughs> Of Little guy from Florida, Monticello, not too far from the state's capital. And right now, the focus is not on Footman, it's on the guy that protects Footman, McRae. Well, I'll say this, what, what DeLance Turner has been able to do for Alcorn State with Footman not really able to get into the passing game as much has been really valuable. And if you think about it, Footman last week just lights out against McNeese, but they couldn't get the running game going seven yards. Today, can't get the passing game going if you're Alcorn State, but they've got 156 yards on the ground. So, you know, it seems like that where the passing isn't going well, the rushing is. And DeLance Turner is rushing well. As a matter of fact, we'll have his second 100-yard night of the season. He is very close to the century mark now. First down and 10, football to the 48. And the big offensive lineman has come to the sidelines. Looks like he's okay. Likely coming back. Turner inside Southern Territory. Breaks it to the 30-20. And there's nobody that's going to catch up with him. 52 yards to pay dirt. What a run there by DeLance Turner. And give a lot of credit to those offensive linemen. That's where it started for Alcorn State. Again, we talked about this setting the tone in the second half. If you are the Alcorn State Braves, what a run by Turner. And it starts right here over the right look at that blocking over the right line turner squeaks by and there's no one at home and turner is just off to the races 
Massive blocking up front. Back to Lance Turner may work on a 200-yard night. That 52-yarder has got him right about 150 on the evening. But more importantly, it's given Alcorn their first lead of the contest, a two-point advantage. And McCullough will try to make it a field goal distance. I tell you what, this is the way you wanted to start off the third quarter if you were Alcorn. McCullough's kick. Up and good. First drive of the second half. Productive for the Braves. Took less than two minutes. And it was Turner bringing it in from 52 yards away. I'm Coach Fred McNair, All Corner State, and you're watching Swag Digital Network. Ram Ford. Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. First all court lead of the football game happens at the 1309 mark in quarter number three. There is a platoon that comes out after each touchdown and does push ups to match the score. So there were 27 of those for the squad after the touchdown run of 52 yards and the extra point kick. 52 yarder. Was from Turner and McCullough tacking on the extra point. It is McCullough with the approach. Kicks it in the direction of Washington, who will make the catch while backtracking to the four. And brought down at the 20. Good open field tackle. That's by number 32, Cole, the defensive back out of Memphis, Tennessee. And you can see just a great shot right there. Man. He just had his uh, he had his target right there, and Washington wasn't going anywhere. Looked like some running room for him, and Cole just simply said, "Okay, I'll put an end to this." Yep. Dropped him to the twenty. The nose of the football, just shy of that mark. Austin Howard, who threw for 219 yards in the first half. Who said he wasn't playing? <sighs> Well, it was a debate all week long. Pass batted up, and Howard almost caught his own pass. Footman has done that once this year, by the way. You know what? That was a good defensive play there by Alcorn because there was a tip right there, and then you see right here knocking down Austin Howard from catching that football. That was a good heads-up play uh, by the defenseman in making sure that Howard didn't catch the ball. Brings up a second down and 10. Ben, who rushed for 54 yards in the first half, he is beside his quarterback. Steps out into the flats, makes the catch, nothing there. Drop behind the line of scrimmage. That's some good aggressive defense there by Alcorn State University, staying at home. Good play there by uh, Diego Sa uh, Sama, the defensive back from Boca Raton, Florida. Brings up a third down and 12. Southern University coming into the ball game 12 for 44 this season on third down conversions. Today, the five out of 10. Most definitely a different start to the second half as compared to the first half. Howard able to get rid of it, but it's incomplete. There is a flag though on the play, dropped at the 20 could be holding here on Southern University. If it is, they'll probably uh, decline this and be bring a fourth down. Ineligible receiver down the field. Number 82 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So fourth down coming up here for Southern University and great pressure. The pocket collapsed. And when you don't have the mobility, you don't get out of situations like that as you would if you were you had two healthy limbs there. 
And so now Southern University will punt the ball. Alcorn has already scored, taking the lead here in the third quarter. So now here, Southern's defense is going to be called on once again to stop the momentum of the home team. You know, the interesting thing, too, about the lack of mobility is that not only are you immobile, but you don't really want to get mobile and get out into the open field when you've got an injury that can be aggravated. No, you don't. Warford on the bounce. Ill advised, but it becomes profitable. Down wow. to the 41. <laughs> you see the... There was a hit there, one of the Southern players, and he's now on the sideline, mixing it up on the Alcorn sideline. As uh, one of the players, I'm trying to see who that was. It looked like uh, for Southern University, it was number eight, Benjamin Harris, the running back. He got rocked at the end of this play. Here comes Warford. Bam, right there. Nice hit to protect Warford as he was going out of bounds. I don't know who got the worst of that one, but... On the block there, that was number 45, Matt, uh, I should say, Javen Morrison. Yep, we got a little chippy. Oh, yeah. A little edgy on the sidelines. Having deeper conversation. It's a little more than that earlier, how do you do? Well, why are you trying to figure out how your mother's doing as well? <laughs> Football on the 37, first and 10, Footman. Handoff is given to another back that has been very has proven himself to be very oh, profitable oh for this Alcorn squad in the first half P.J. Simmons had that nifty 28 yard touchdown run and picks up four there the yeah Simmons great job on the play and now you've got to second down in six here for Alcorn State University Whitman trying to rush it up the official was in the way clapping his hands one of the play to begin and there's why that was a good hit at the last minute on defense by Andre Augustine, who actually came into the game leading the team in tackles, a junior from Monroe, Louisiana. First down for the Braves. First half, pretty much Southern. Certainly the first quarter. Second half, at least the third quarter. It has been, for the most part, Braves. And a fake to Simmons. Footman on the keeper. And he will slide out of bounds at the 11 and get shoved over near the concrete wall. Yeah, Footman, there's no padding over, over there. And that time Johnson was there making sure that Footman did not try to bounce back in bounds. And not, again, a nice sell on the fake. And Footman just takes off with the football. And you see a little fake right there, and he just makes sure he gives a nice little shove. And this is incidental contact and goes over to the wall. We talked about Andre Augustine, who was a leading tackler on the team coming into this uh, ballgame for Southern, went to Carroll High School in uh, Monroe. Simmons inside the 10, inside the 5, another touchdown for Simmons. Some Somebody missed an assignment there, or either there was just a, ba a bad attempt at a tackle. When you see Simmons coming back around the short side of the field, here's Simmons once again, really small and elusive, comes right back right there. Couldn't get his arms around him, and Simmons goes in for another touchdown and credit enough of some more great blocking downfield. And Simmons, after the score, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 40 of the offense, definitively being forced on the kickoff. I wonder if they got that number right. Trey Farrell, the linebacker, on the offense. That's what he said. He said it was on yeah. number 40. Number 40 has committed his first unsportsmanlike foul of the ball game. Are they sure it's number 40? Correction. The foul is committed by number four of the <laughs> offense. Okay, so he's wearing Walkmans or something and listening to Santoria up here in the box. Corrects himself, and it was the same guy that scored the touchdown, Simmons, who got a little too exuberant in the celebration. I was wondering, I was like, 40s on the field, really? But again, I want to look at this run by Simmons because Simmons just goes around the, to the short side of the field and just slips right by the tacklers. And you see the uh, Augustine came over too late. Now the extra point drive. McCullough's kick. It is good. And all points scored in the second half belong to the home team, and they have built a 10-point advantage with better than 10 to go in the third.
Coach Fred McNair, All Corn State, and you're watching the Swag Digital Network. King of the Rapids. I'll get you next time. The 2017 RAV4, Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. Well, there is the work the platoon does after each Alcorn score. 34 push-ups. You know, if I was going to do that kind of thing, I would have to be on a platoon for like the Jacksonville Jaguars or something. I mean, it had to be somebody that doesn't score much. You would have to get an ambulance. <laughs> there would have to be one part nearby. Yeah. A lot of those push-ups have come in the second half. You got to be in shape to do that. What if they score 50 points? And they did against Miles. Yep. 50 push-ups. And every time they score, they do that mile, mile of push-ups. Yep. yep. So... Impressive. So, too, have the Braves been impressive. Kick will be returned by Thompson. And Thompson really didn't have any desire to return this kick and has less so now dropped inside the 10. And did the whistle blow as the ball popped out? No, it, nope, did it not. didn't. That is all corns football inside the 10 at about the five yard line. And that is a massive, massive mistake by Southern University. The first mistake is they, the ball ended up bouncing backwards and then trying to run and then circling all the way back to come forward. You can see here, as he's going down, the question is, was the ball out? And he may have been down. I yep. think he may have been down. Yep, I think you're right. I mean, it was close as the ball was being yanked from the hands of Thompson. See, that the first mistake is right. The previous play is under review. Now, of course, the run here is great, but now when you circle back this way, you're losing yardage. Now you're inside the 10 and all that dancing around. And let's see if the knee is down. That's the question. They're going after the ball, going after the ball. I think he may have been down. I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I think it looks like the elbow. Ball is coming out as he's going down, but yeah. I'm trying to figure out if the elbow hits or the knee hits before the ball starts coming out right there. Now, it, from that angle, it's hard to tell, but that ball may have been coming out. It looks like the elbow may have touched the ground. The knee never did. But the knee never did, but the elbow, that, that may have been coming out. And of course, the officials have got to have right the there definitive information from the replay to turn or turn it over to revert just a couple of mistakes there just you know of course you know circling back and that was a block in the back that wasn't called and they did a great job going after the ball because he was still up on his feet I think it's going to be turned over it looks like he is down but that ball is coming out Almost simultaneously. Yep. I, I think it's coming out. I don't think he can turn this call over. It's going to be first down and 10. And here it is again, right? The ball come out right there. Well, the That's question going to be is, tough. is it inconclusive or? It's coming out right there. That is going to be tough to call. And obviously, based on the length of time, it's very difficult for those reviewing the replays. Yeah, and, and when, you, when you're replaying it that much, Robert, I would be more apt to say that they're not gonna turn this one over. I just don't think there's enough evidence to say that he was not right there. It's coming out. It looks like he's trying to, it's scraping out before he hits the ground. Right there, that's when his arm is down, and you see right, right in the middle there. I wish I had a circle and drawn it right there, but you can see the ball coming out. Yep. Well, based on the length of time, you would think it would be difficult to overturn the call of the field. It's tough. 
because it is not blatantly obvious. I think what they're doing is they're not looking at the knee anymore, but they're looking at when the elbow was down. Conversation continuing. Boom, right there. It's, it's almost simultaneous. Yep. This is a big part of the ball game, too, yep. though. I mean, you're talking about Alcorn being in possession of the football at about you, the eight-yard line. You can see the elbow coming down and this and the ball starting to come out all at the same time. That's so another it, angle. It will either be first and ten from the nine for Alcorn if first and goal. Or for actually at the nine for Southern, and you're right, it will be first and goal for Alcorn. Right there, they've, they've, James has been able to freeze it there, and it sure looks like the elbow is down. And so the, the ball is. The question is, is it is the ball coming out? True. Right there. Yep. See, it looks like it's coming out right about, as you can see right there, it looks like it's coming out as the elbow hits the ground. It going, going, and right there. You see where it starts to come out. That's why, that's why I think it. I don't know if he's going to turn this one over. I don't know, but, I mean, these teams are waiting like bated breath like they're getting ready to win an election. How long have we been in this holding pattern while the officials review? I think they've landed planes at Norman International <laughs> as long as we've been doing this. Here we go. After further review, the runner's elbow was down prior to the ball becoming loose. The ball will be spotted at the nine-yard line, first down, Southern. I can't be mad at that call. I, I can't be mad at that call at all because it's very hard to tell. It looked like the ball may have been coming out just at the elbow hit, but it's hard to tell because here's his elbow. There's the ball, as you can see right there. Yep. You, you got to get. You got to give it back to Southern. Big break wow. for Southern. That could have gone either way. But you still got problems. You're at your own nine-yard line. Yeah, it's not exactly you have stellar field position right now. But there's a little running room out to the 15-yard line. Right now, you just want breathing room with your Southern. And now this momentum shift that there's been. At one point in time, 24 to 10 was the score. So you're talking about, my math's not really good, but that's 24 unanswered all corn points. 24-10 was the score, as a matter of fact. That's when uh, Southern scored their touchdown uh, for a correct 48-yard pass from Howard. And that was uh, 7.38 left in the second quarter. Second out and four. Howard, pass caught by Menard. And that looks like a first down. It's lying on the 20. It is. Then the sticks will move. And that's what Southern needs to do right now is they need to slow the tempo down a little bit. You start going back and forth and back and forth with, with Alcorn, especially with the momentum that they have, it doesn't bode well for you. And, and here's something else I just want to add. Robert, normally sometimes you have fans that leave like right after halftime. These fans are sticking in there. I think we got more now yeah. than we may have had when the game begun. I mean, you've got them on both hills. you got them, you got them just standing up by the concession stand, by the scoreboard. I'd like to see the attendance of this game. It's, it's got to be, if not capacity, right close to it. Stadium holds 22,500, but we've got people, as you mentioned, in the end zone. They are draped along the sidewalks around the perimeter of the stadium. So if the seats hold 22,500, we might have close to 30. Pass incomplete. And then are the intended target. Third and long here, not the ideal situation for Southern University. Remember that momentum shift that you had 24 on answer now for the Braves after being down 24 to 10. The defense has been able to hold. Now offense is starting to just stagger a little bit here for Southern University. And you got to credit Alcorn for making an adjustment here at halftime because they're really starting to frustrate Austin Howard. Third down and nine. Southern trying to get something together. It has been stymied by Alcorn since about midway through the second. The pass dropped. 
Washington should have had it. Yeah, that's a catch that you have to have. Washington was wide open. How Howard did exactly what he needed to do. A little pressure put on by, uh, by to uh, Austin Howard, but that is a catch that you have got to make. You got to look that in and make sure you catch that ball. That's a first down. And instead now, punting time for Southern University. Talk about a till of two halves. First half, as we mentioned, Southern, impressive. Second half, Alcorn, impressive. Timothy Thompson on to kick. Warford stands at midfield, so unless something unexpected happens, excellent field position for Alcorn. And Warford makes the catch of the 46. And he will be dropped at the 48. I thought I saw a little bit of a hand wave. I thought he had called for the fair catch. It was, if it happened, I guess it was extremely brief. Let's see, did he call that? Uh, right there, that hand came up, and I guess that was just part of the arm motion when running forward. Well, he tried to get away every, any way possible. And there were just yellow shirts just all around him, and couldn't get away from that uh, last orange uh, yellow shirt, which was uh, Benjamin Harris, who's on special teams from Peoria, Illinois. First down and 10 for Alcorn. 24 straight brave points. And Southern, which had that 24 to 10 advantage in the second stanza. Trying to find the formula that gets it back. Turner inside the 40, but there is a marker down across the way. Yeah, that, that's going to be a little, that's going to be a hold, I believe. <laughs> Or ineligible. Illegal formation. More than 14 players in the backfield on the offense. Five yard penalty. Replay. First down. So there you have the call. Five yard mark off. A replay of first down. James Crenshaw, our producer, who I can hear in my ear and Nobody else can, said 14 players in the backfield. That's a lot of players. It did sound like he said 14, but I'm assuming. It really did. I'm assuming he said something else. Maybe more than four team players. Maybe. That's what I'm hoping, because if you have 14 players, that's the first problem there. <laughs> Footman. Ooh. Pass is incomplete. Pass is complete. Three, Jacoby Papillion from Lake Charles, Louisiana. The freshman had an opportunity to steal that one and uh, was banging the, banging the ground because he wanted that one back. Right there on the tip. Oh, couldn't get to it. Footman has thrown a pick in this game, but I don't know that you can blame him. I mean, that Danny Johnson INT sensational. The give goes to Turner. He's got running room. Across the 40 down to the 35 goes Turner and by golly, he might have a 200-yard night tonight. Well, he'd be my my vote so far as player of the week in the, in the Southwestern Athletic Conference on offense. He has been a workhorse for uh, Alcorn State so far. You can see Turner just does a great job of field vision, just getting in between defenders, looking for the opening, and then keeping those feet going. Unusual-looking play there that really never developed with a fake to Turner, and then Footman trying to get it out of the flats after... It appeared as though he may run with it. You, know, you were talking about Delance Turner and his performance earlier in the year that got him player of the week honors. There has been an all corn player of the week each week mm -hmm. of the season. Offensively Footman and Turner defensively Solomon Muhammad. Turner's working on that second one. Still on his feet to the 20. To the 16-yard line goes Turner. They just cannot tackle DeLance Turner. Turner does a great job of keeping his feet going. And watch his feet just continue to turn. The handoff is there, and you see right there, gets out of a tackle. And then here's another tackle coming. Can't get, just gets out of multiple tackles. And finally, a couple of guys come over to help out. But, man, he just does a great job of getting out of tackles. 172 yards in three games. He will have more than 172 yards in three quarters. And just think about it, seven yards against McNeese, a little bit better today. Yep, just a tad. 
And Turner coming to the sidelines for a much deserved break. But heck, now you got Simmons in the backfield. I mean, he's not a, a shabby back either. You've got to contend with the likes of Bo. And of course, Footman at quarterback on a second down and eight. Fake to Simmons. Footman on the keeper inside the 15, and he will get to the 14. Good job by Southern because you had three receivers on the opposite side. There was a fake to Simmons there, and you thought maybe they would wanted Southern to bite. No dice there. They had exactly what they wanted, and they were able to get Footman forced out of bounds. Very little game brings up a third down and long. Make to Simmons. Footman's got a receiver. Nothing but open. That is Warfield from 14 yards out. Breakdown in the secondary by Southern University as uh, the receiver, number 10, Warford, came across. Great catch by Warford. Look at this again. Just great play fake freezing. The defense, Warford coming across. The defenders, you notice what they did. The defenders were backed by another receiver, left Warford wide open about three yards deep in the end zone, touchdown Alcorn, and now 40 to 24, 30 unanswered. McCullough trying to make it a 41-24 advantage and make it 31 in a row. And he does. <laughs> It has been all, all corn in the second half. Leading at 41-24. This is Coach Oden, the head football coach of Southern University, and you're watching the SWAT Digital Network. to Houston for the 2017 Toyota Swag Football Championship Saturday, December 2nd inside the NRG Stadium where the Eastern Division champs will take on the Western Division champs for the final victory with Ro Timmy from the hit show Power will open with the National Anthem along with Grammy nominated The Voice contestant Tamar Davis hosted by Vic Tigger and Tracy Steele and the post-concert performance by Mays featuring Frankie Beverly at NRG Stadium witness the final day of judgment where a legend will rise for tickets and more information go online to swagfootball.com King of the Rapids. I'll get you next time. <laughs> King of the stage. The 2017 <laughs> RAV4. Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. Well, our platoon didn't give us 41 push-ups, but they gave us something a little more interesting. Uh, a little choreographed. Kind of like the worm. Yeah. Well, hey, we'll, we'll let them go with, uh, without the 41 for the uh, creativity. Over in the direction of Washington, it will trickle out. 41-24. It was a 24-10 ball game in the second quarter. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball will be spotted at the 35-yard line. First down, seven. And there you hear the official spotted at the 35. But midway through the second, big lead for Southern, and they appear to be en route to something we did not anticipate. Yeah, at first you thought that uh, Southern had all the momentum. They were doing what they had to do, 24-10 lead. Went in with a 24-20 lead at halftime. And then after that, it's, it's just been nothing but Alcorn, 41-24. They have not scored since back in the second quarter. Both teams coming in with a 1-2 and two record overall. Run up the middle, and the gain is about 5. Some scores for you around the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, Alabama A&M yeah. right now on top of Texas Southern, 30-13 yeah, yeah. in the fourth. Jackson State looking for their first win. They're on top of Palm Bluff, 27-24. That game is in Jackson Valley, losing to Grambling, 29-20. And Prairie View on top of Alabama State in Montgomery, 14 to nothing in the second. Tevin Horton, the running back, first carry of the contest, picks up six. Horton's second carry. He is not going to pick up near that much. 
Yeah, that's, left that's, line. that's the way you got to do it, Robert. You got to make sure you send a message right, there. There down. was nothing doing as far as getting across that line. Look at the right there. The gap is just filled. And you got good backup coming up, all that purple swarm coming up. And that's what you need. You know, if they don't, if they're not there for backup, he gets about 10, 15 yards. But good backup there by Alcorn State. Obviously very early in the season, but you got to think Alcorn, at least the way they're playing right now, a contender to get back to the SWAC championship game. They keep playing like this. Absolutely. It's probably very possible. Howard just had to get rid of it. There was a receiver nearby in the form of Stacy Pyro, but they're kind of getting away from some of the things that they did. And I'm sure that, you know, Austin Howard, some of the things he can't see, but they really had a lot of success in the flat and to the tight end in the first half. And they really haven't been able to do that. Now Howard is kind of throwing the ball uh, over the head of the receivers a little bit more. I think you got twofold there. Howard having to be on the run a little bit more because the pocket collapsing. And two, you got to credit Alcorn for stepping up their defense. Yep. Warford to the 29. Thompson kick. Warford will catch in traffic at the 25 and go nowhere. Dangerous uh, play by Warford because, you know, if you can hit the right way, you can lose that football. Warford upset because he didn't feel that there was enough room in order to catch that football. There was plenty of room. And I'm not quite sure what else that he would want the official to call there. And oh, a little, a, little, yeah. a little cheap shot. That's what it was. There was a cheap shot right there at the end of the play. That's what it was. If you go, if you go back to that, you can see a little bit of a jab there right at the end of the play. Here's a kick, and it comes down to Warford. And after the tackle, you're gonna. I think it's number three. Gave him a little, little shove there, right into the face mask. Right there. Yep. The end of the play. First down and ten. All corn football at the twenty-five. Four fifty-six to go. The Third previous quarter. play is being reviewed. Yeah, the, the, it is being reviewed, and I'm. I mean, it's obvious that there was a, uh, a shove there to the face mask at the end of the play. It's, it's obvious. You can see it right, right there. Yep. I think that was Elijah Small, the defensive back. Is that a ejection? After further call? review, Let's see. the play stands. First down. Well. I don't know if that's reviewable. Nah, obviously was not reviewing the aspect of the possibility of a penalty. I can see why uh, Warford was a little upset now. Yep. High snap. Footman can get to it. Picks it up. Rolling towards the end zone. Aaron Tiller. And it's a touchdown. Talk about a momentum change. Southern defensively. Aaron Tiller, the big guy, rumbling into the end zone. Great play by Tiller. And let's look at it again. They get into the backfield, and Footman had nowhere to go. Tiller picks it up and goes in for six. There is a reason. He was a preseason first-team defense pick. It looked like that. It looked like that Footman was trying to pass the ball or hand it off. I should say it was right there. Simmons was right in the way of Footman. That's what it was. Two players right in that area. He couldn't get to the ball. Tiller goes in. That snaps that string of 31 straight and puts us right back into the we got a ball game mode. This is Coach Oden, the head football coach of Southern University, and you're watching the SWAT Digital Network. 
Liberty Houston for the 2017 Toyota Swag Football Championship. Saturday, December 2nd, inside the NRG Stadium, where the Eastern Division champs will take on the Western Division champs for the final victory. With Ro Timmy from the hit show Power, will open with a national anthem, along with Grammy nominated The Voice contestant Tamar Davis, hosted by Vic Tigger and Tracy Steele, and the post concert performance by Maze, featuring Frankie Beverly at NRG Stadium. Witness the final day of judgment where a legend will rise. For tickets and more information, go online to swagfootball.com. King of the Rapids. I'll get you next time. <laughs> King of the Stage. The 2017 RAV4. Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. Barajas has got it teed up, ready to boot it away. Warford awaits. He will field to the 20. 40. And it's Barajas who knocks him out of bounds at the 46. Well, you got a lot of hard hitting, a lot of jaw jacking down there towards the end of the play. And this kick really wasn't deep. Kind of a short end over end kick. That was taken at about the 20-yard line, and so Alcorn will get good field position, but Warford, great job in running. And then right here at the end of the play, kicker comes over, and, man, he I don't know, he got the business on that one. That is a la Ray Guy. Remember the yep. kicker for the Raiders who just loved to hit people? In fact, he was a Mississippi boy. Mm -hmm. Clark and Warford getting into it at the end of the play. And off, give it a... Simmons and Simmons will squeak his way forward for four. This game is long from over. One play changes the complexity of the entire ball game, and that, that's exactly what happened with uh, the with this that last play. Aaron Tiller be taking advantage basically of an all corn mistake when the snap happened. It was right there with Simmons and Footman at the same time. The ball hit Simmons, and Footman couldn't control it. Well, shifting of personnel on a second down and six. Make to Simmons. Footman to throw. Gets it over to Simmons. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and then subs. Backtracks to the 45 and will be close to an Alcorn first. Got a player down for Southern University. Trying to see who that is in just a second. Football just shy of the 45. It will be third and very short. There you see near the end of the play, maybe what happened. Oh, right there on the leg. I just, uh, let's see. There it is right there. Can't see his number. No, good to see him up and see him heading to the sidelines. I believe that is Contavious Preston. Yep. Boy, that looked bad. But able to go to the sidelines underneath his own power. So, oh, yep. Yep. Yeah, that, that really, it looked, it looked probably worse than what it really was. Contavious Preston, senior from Atlanta, Georgia. We were doing a couple of, a game a couple of weeks ago in which a uh, player suffered one of those uh, mm. kind of Lattimore type injuries. And, oh, it was rough. Third and short. Fake to Simmons. Footman's going to be trapped behind the line of scrimmage. And it will be fourth and not as short. Talk about stepping up defensively for Southern University. Defensive line just getting inside there and credit. That right side of the line for doing a great job in getting to Footman. Tried to fake it to Simmons, and I tell you what, nobody was fooled on that play. Here comes McCullough on the kick. This is the first time we have seen McCullough since that three yard effort in the first half. So he is on the field hoping to make amends. Danny Johnson standing back at the 16. 
Good punt. Hits, rolls oh. into the end zone, and oh, it'll turn into about a 50-yarder. So it'll be first down and 10 here for... It's first down and 10 now, and 41 to 20, 31, you know, if you're looking at this score, Southern University has the momentum. They got to make something happen here now offensively. But Alcorn, you know, they got to be a little frustrated. You know, they really, they've really been inconsistent today. And I think you have to credit that to some good Southern defense. Southern's really turned up the pressure on defense, especially on the Norris Footman. The pocket has collapsed, and he has not had one of his best days passing the football. Got to be frustrated, too. They score 31 points in a row, and this ball game has not been decided by any strength. Right. That's right. First down and 10 for Austin Howard and his Jaguars from Southern University. The fan base from Baton Rouge travels well. Pass complete. That is Craig, and he will rumble inside the 45 to the 43. What did we talk about? They got to get back to what was working for them, going to the tight end. That's exactly what they did. Craig already has a touchdown for Southern University today, and he did a great job in getting into a clearing sidestepping the defender which he did earlier today and getting a big first down plus a lot more that tight end is open they see him at the end of the play reach down for the left leg and he is going to go to the sidelines but he looked better with each stride so craig has got his jags inside the 45 to the 43. still a couple of minutes to go here in the third Ben's got running room up the middle. Down to the 16 goes Ben. Getting back to those things that have worked for him. Now, of course, you look at this play again, and what do they do? Ben, he was big in the first half of the ball game. Alcorn had a hard time stopping him. And instead of, instead of pulling it back, Ben keeps it, gets out of a tackle. And you got to wrap up. That's the thing. If you don't wrap up, it's awfully hard to stop some of these running backs. They're very talented in getting out of arm tackling. First down for the 18. Pass is caught over the middle. Complete to Beard. Gets to about the 14-yard line, so it'll bring up second down at about six. And what you want to do if you're Southern is just to keep dinking and dump, dunking like that because now all of a sudden they've got to stop that short stuff. If they're not stopping that short stuff, then you're able to get a pretty good chunk. Second down and short, or second down and six now. Into the red zone, and Alcorn with their backs up against the wall here in the third. Leading it by 10, but Jaguars threatening to change that here. Ben will be roped down at the 12. But what does that do, though, here, Robert, is it gets you third down yeah, and about yeah. three or four yards to go. And that's manageable if you're this offense. Because when you've, when you've had good luck against Alcorn, you switched it up. You were going to the tight end. Little little pass out to the flat. Now you run the ball, and so it's throwing all court off a little bit here. Four down territory. Oh yeah, no, I don't think I don't think there's a question here. Third down and four. If you get inside the eight, you got the first. And all court is asking for the timeout. Timeout. All court state. Their first. This has been a game of momentum swings, and right now, Peters be swinging in Baton Rouge. I'm Coach Fred McNair, Alcorn State, and you're watching SWAC Digital Network. Ran for Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places.
One more showdown to rule them all. Be there as the crowd roars in excitement. Ten teams battle it out to become champion. In the end, only one will stand victorious. Are you ready to witness final judgment? The 2017 Toyota SWAC Football Championship. Be a part of the action at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas on December 2nd. Get your tickets now at SWAC.org. While we were away after the Alcorn timeout, Howard with the incomplete pass threw it out of the backside of the end zone. Let's take a look at that third down play. There is an injured player, mm. and there's the injured player that got knocked down. Yeah, legs got tangled up. And yeah, they'd be calling an ambulance. Oh, yeah, looks like that left ankle. It looked like it rolled and stepped on his foot or something like that. Oh, yeah, that, that back leg. See who you it can was. see at the end of the play. Yeah, it looked like it was an ankle. Well, there was an immediate summons of the ambulance. Yep, they're bringing on the cart now. Right there. Yep. Man. That was nasty. Yep, right away they were asking for the uh, cart. Coach Dawson Odoms on the field right now and so we're going to have a little bit of delay right here while they get this young man all straightened out. Well there is a injury timeout. We know the injury is serious and this is a gentleman who is not going to be coming back today. Thoughts and prayers with him as we take a break. future starts today. With 34 undergraduate programs and 22 graduate programs, finding your career path is within your reach at Southern University and A&M College. The best way to a successful future is to invest in it through an affordable education at Southern University. Southern University is growing in order to lead you to a bright future. Start your future here, here at Southern University and A&M College. A wise man once said, you can kill a man, but you can't kill an idea. What he meant was that knowledge is eternal. It's a lesson learned, a goal achieved, and it can be passed on from generation to generation, just like it is every day at Alcorn. Both knowledge and the character it takes to use it wisely. Alcorn, where knowledge and character matter. Well, there's a timeout, and we're trying to determine who the injured player is. Right there is the injury, and obviously severe. Yeah, he broke. It looked like right there, you could tell. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's a nasty injury. Nasty, nasty injury. And you could see him reaching back right there. I think that's eight. I think that's 87. Boy, every angle not definitive, but we believe it Ooh. to be 87. But it's a, it's the right leg. Wow, you hate to see that, Robert. It is an unfortunate part of the game that you certainly wish was not. Yep. And obviously the Southern University uh, football team collectively getting together and prayer. You saw Dawson Odoms was out there and right away as soon as he went down, right away you saw his players, the players calling out, calling for the uh, the trainers and everybody to come out there. As a matter of fact, all corn trainers, they were the first ones out there. And you see it right there. Mm. And we, we believe that to be Menard. And again, Randall Menard, uh, who has been throughout the course of the game one of the favorite targets of 
Howard. Yep. Missed the right leg. And they continue to work on him out there, and uh, obviously a very uh, serious moment out here for this young man, and you can see a couple of his teammates that are right by him. You can see the medical service, which is here at Norman, in Norman, Mississippi. You saw the Alcorn trainers over there. They are right now trying to stabilize his leg at this point uh, in order to move him from the ground to the stretcher. And once they do that, that they will wheel him out. But that's usually what they try to do in a situation like this is that the, the time that it takes in order to stabilize that particular limb in order to move him from one point to another and then of course they'll get him over to the ambulance which is while waiting uh, you can't see it right now but it is uh, just to the right of the screen from what you're looking at right now just to the right there are two ambulances that are waiting over there and of course if one has to go then the other one is there and that's the main reason why you have ambulance services at these games is because you just never know what's going to happen with these student athletes and he gives a thumbs up and uh, he will be headed to the hospital here. And our thoughts uh, go out to this young man. Indeed. And by the way, when you are in those thoughts and prayers for this young man, you know, during the course of the week, uh, there was a young lady from Alcorn killed in an accident yeah. uh, on uh, the parkway here. Regina Carr, a junior at Alcorn. Yep. So uh, remember her as well. Yep, they had a, a moment of silence before the game to uh, remember her and, of course, keeping her thoughts and prayers, keeping thoughts and prayers out for her family as well. Barajas, that was a high snap. The placement of the ball on the turf by Catalone was never a particularly good one because of where the snap went. So that obviously threw the timing off on everything. And the Barajas kick. Goes right into the Braves. Yeah, 94 Brooks uh, was there to block the kick, the big defensive end. He was able to get those big paws up and make the block. And now it's first down for Alcorn State. Look at that. Just way up. Got it right in the face, Max. You know, the, the look of Catalone, though, after he, he reached back and got it, it was like when he put the ball down on the turf that he was going into a defensive mode because he knew the Braves were on their way. So you Look see, at that. Him, wow. You see him already turn towards the defense incoming. First down and 10 now for Alcorn. False start on Alcorn. Prior to the snap. False start. Number 75 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains. First down. That's uh, Darius Davis, the offensive lineman. We spoke about this coming into the ball game as Alcorn was one of the most penalized teams coming in after a halftime four penalties for 24 yards coming into the uh, third quarter and that's below average oh yeah that's way below five yard mark off first and 15 Turner nothing there so why not go this way still on his feet tripped up at the 23 well you've got he is one gritty runner able to get out of all kinds of situations the give to Taylor just starts out one way missed tackle here starts In up the field for the third quarter and you know if it's not for this last minute shoestring tackle there and just and throwing him off one. balance he keeps one. going I'm looking forward to these third quarter stats to see how many yards that young man has 15 minutes to play it's a 10 point game future starts today. With 34 undergraduate programs and 22 graduate programs, finding your career path is within your reach at Southern University and A&M College. The best way to a successful future is to invest in it through an affordable education at Southern University. Southern University is growing in order to lead you to a bright future. Start your future here, here at Southern University and A&M College. A wise man once said, you can kill a man, but you can't kill an idea. What he meant was that knowledge is eternal. It's a lesson learned, a goal achieved, and it can be passed on from generation to generation. 
just like it is every day at Alcorn. Both knowledge and the character it takes to use it wisely. Alcorn, where knowledge and character matter. 15 minutes of football left in this one. Alcorn with a 41-31 lead. We came into the game talking about Footman, talking about the possibility of Howard. And not that we overlooked DeLance Turner. He had that 100-yard game to open up the season for Alcorn. But maybe not quite as much emphasis on a guy that's really been key to tonight's game for Alcorn. Yeah, DeLance Turner has just been incredible in tonight's ball game. And this is a complete opposite of what we saw Alcorn do with McNeese State. Could not run the ball at all, but had a really good night passing. Tonight's just been the opposite, running the ball extremely well. Second down and four. Turner. He will pick up the first down as he steps out of bounds near the 30. He is just so dangerous. And you know what? When teams start looking at this film, they are going to really key in on this running game. And here's one of the things they're going to talk about. You can't just arm tackle this kid. You have got to get your hands and your arms around him. Because if you just put your arms out there, he's really got a lot of elusive speed. He does a good job of turning those wheels. 172 yards coming into the game, but probably got that tonight. Yep. I think he's got, he may have a 200 yard night already. Turner coming to the sidelines, a much deserved break. Simmons checking in. Four hundred twenty four yards passing one week ago for footman. And he had a twenty four yard first half and that pass intended for Warford blocked. Third down for the break. There was a big body getting to that pass from Footman. Got a couple more finals we'll tell you about here in just a second. Footman with a rollout to his right, nothing there. Turns around, goes to his left. And he's gonna pick up the first down at the 40. A great job there by Footman. You know, he hasn't been able to get it done with it with the arm. He gets it done with his legs. He reverses his field. Great job. Takes off with the football and does a wise thing here, getting out of bounds after getting the first down. Knew exactly where he needed to go to pick up the first, move the sticks. Play clock ticking down to single digits. Now maybe a little more deliberate effort to run time off the clock for Alcorn. And off goes to Simmons. And Simmons, look at this. Finds a seam, but he apparently stepped out. How close was that? <laughs> <laughs> stepped out of bounds around the 45. Well, Simmons had the right idea. Here's the give, and their running game has just been incredible. And on the short side of the field, he wanted to take off right there, but you know all that blocking that was going on, and Simmons was like, "Well, look, I'll just go out of bounds and keep on going." But had he not stepped out of bounds, that might have been a might have been another touchdown for Alcorn and more push-ups. Yeah, they're trying to fuel up, hydrate up over in the uh, military platoon to get ready to do the possibility of additional push-ups. Got a ways to go, though. 60 yards for Painter. Penalty flag flies, and we will see what this infraction is. Prior to the snap. The limb game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, it'll back him up five yards here, and it'll be second down and about third, second down and 12. A couple of finals here, Texas Southern, or so Alabama a and beat Texas Southern 30 to 13. Grambling beat Mississippi Valley 38 to six. Fourth quarter, Jackson and Pine Bluff in a close one, 27-24. All three Mississippi schools in the SWAC were in town tonight. Obviously, including this one from Alcorn. Handoff goes to Simmons. Puts on the brakes, makes a right turn, and oh! 
He's asking for a flag. Thought he got his face gear rearranged. I mean, it looked like somebody put him in the headlock pretty good, but Simmons, boy, he just steps on the brake so fast and reverses his feet. Look at that. Comes right back, and here is the tackle. And this is why he wanted it. It looked like that uh, somebody grabbed his head. He wanted a flag, but no flag there. Well, if you, if you had an interest in the yardage returner, how about 202 yards? And then, of course, the three and a loss, 199. Wow. And a touchdown. I think he's going to be Swack Offensive Player of the Week. Po very possible. Simmons trying to duck underneath some defenders to pick up the first. He will not get to the 49, I don't believe. No, I don't think he did. It's going to bring up the no, fourth. No, Is it third down and two? Third and four? It was. And now I, yeah, but they're going to bring the chains out. And we will see if it is fourth and inches or first and ten. It's going to be close. First down, all corn. They keep the drive going. So an opportunity for all corn to run more time off the clock. Picking up the first, and I think some of the Jags going, wait a minute. Um, we don't like the way you place that marker down at the 45 and stretched out the chains, but it's all official. Ball just shy of the 49-yard line where it is first down and 10. Turn of 199 yards on the ground. Footman just 51 through the air. Simmons wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage losing yardage there on first down and that's what you need you need some tough defense to kind of bear down here because you're down 41 31 you're going to need two possessions just fyi uh that player confirmed it was Rand randall menard he is on his way to the hospital right now and obviously we wish him the best second out and 12. things certainly balancing out through the course of a ball game if you'll remember after the first stands a 158 in total offense for Southern 14 for Alcorn. Halftime 291 for Southern 180 for Alcorn. And here we are after three. 378 for Southern and 342 for Alcorn. Footman just has to dive forward right there and just get back basically to uh, the original line of scrimmage. And now it's third down and ten. And I tell you what, Footman is struggling a little bit. This has been one of the games that's been challenging and you know, you go back to that uh, game against McNeese where everything was clicking on the passing game and the Cowboys couldn't stop anything. But right here, it's it's a little frustrating because Footman can't get anything started in the passing game today. And that's a little frustrating for him, but it's been the run has been working. Over the course of his brilliant career at Alcorn, he hasn't had many games like this one. Footman can't find anybody to throw to and will be dropped to the 48. Bring up fourth down. And so oh, now man. that defense of Southern University, they get that offense off the field, which is one of the keys of the game tonight. And now they'll get Alcorn will punt the ball. Now here's what the, the good news for Southern is they get the ball back. Bad news is you get a good kickoff here. Alcorn can flip the field on you. They have to be very, very careful. This is the, that type of area. And they're going to put Johnson back here to receive this punt. Stands at his 12. McCullough and his own 34. That's a good punt. Fair catch at about the 8. So they flip the field. 42-yard kick, no return. Oh, that's first and 10 inside there, 10. But ball at the 9, where it will be first down and 10 for a Southern University team that, well, they're not really running out of time. There's 8.58 left to play in the fourth, but this is a squad that can score and score quickly. 260 yards through the year for Austin Howard. Not bad for a guy we didn't think he was, was going to play today. One and a half wheels. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Footman, 
51 yards passing. Very unfootmanlike. And off goes to Ben, and Ben gains 10. Gosh, he has just been a monster tonight. Ben, of course, uh, at the end of the third quarter, 14 carries, 92 yards, and a touchdown. With that carry there, he's over 100 yards. Impressive night for Ben as well. Cuddlebacks, impressive. Turner for Alcorn, Ben for Southern, and here's Ben again. Just, just outran the defensive coverage there. Ben, was, he wanted to get kind of break away there. Great job blocking and great blocking down the field for Southern. Another 17 yards. Look and at that blocking downfield, opening up a hole. And then you saw big number 55 right there for Alcorn State University, and that was Sterling Shippy, the defensive lineman. He just kind of froze, and he didn't get to Ben. First and 10 for Howard. Try it again. This time, Ben picks up two. Ben on the carriage, Ben got first for the Braves. Check it out. Nine. Swag Digital Network, Birmingham, Alabama on Friday. As Mississippi Valley takes on Howard University, 7 o'clock on Friday night. Join us. That ought to be a very good game. I should say good match. Uh, we'll call it game. Should be It should be really, really good. Two teams that have been... Especially Valley. They've been one of the powers of this conference. Howard to pass. Launches it down the field. It is incomplete, but there's a flag. And there's interference. Yeah. They don't like to call. That's uh, number 45. Javen Morris, the defensive back. He does not like that call. But unfortunately. Pass interference. Number 45 on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Austin Howard just let that one go, and you know I can I can see that because his head wasn't turned around, his hands were on him. I can see that. Don't like it, but I can I don't I can understand why he doesn't like it, but I can see why he called that. Dontrell Brown, the intended target, and as you saw, contact going down the field between he and Morrison, and Morrison charged with the infraction. Howard again, this time aims to the other side of the field, and it's well away from intended receiver Washington. They're trying to get big chunks of yards right now. 7.32 left in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to get big chunks of yard right now, trying to move the ball down the field. Third down and 10 after a couple of long pass plays. Howard to throw, Ben's open. And he'll get banged around a bit at the 48 and lose yardage. He looked like a pinball right there. As there were a couple of guys there. One of the guys there was number 18, Ely, the defensive back on the tackle for Alcorn State University. And Ben, who's been very effective tonight for Alcorn, for uh, Southern University, they get the ball, you know, they've been going to the flat quite a bit, but great job uh, by Ely in stopping that because you know, that's really what's been hurting Southern. A lot of stuff to the tight end and going into the flat, and Ely did a great job snuffing it out. A little bit of a change there when you look at Alcorn's front now. Three down linemen, and they've got some guys now covering. Howard again to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. Steps up, fires, and it is up for grabs and incomplete off Morrison. That's a great job there, just getting the ball knocked down. And once again, we're going to call his name, Javen Morrison, the defensive back, sitting back, just playing kind of a center field. And Austin Howard all day to pass the ball. And when he goes down there, great coverage. Two defenders around, one short, one long. And basically the receiver, he would have had to really have some acrobatics in order to come down with that one. Fourth down now, and Alcorn will get the ball back. And... Southern University, they're going to run out of chances here pretty soon. They still have three timeouts, but they're down 10. Nash kicking, averaging 35 per. Line drive kick would be returnable if he could get to it in Warford. Well, he decides I'll get to it on the roll. Across nice stiff the 25, arm. and there's a flag in for a face mask. Yep.
So you get the kickoff and Warford, this is a this is dangerous because if you muff that, the turnover. So. During the return, personal foul, number 94 of the return team, cross collar tackle. 15 yards would be at 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. Well, the other side. The foul was on the kicking team. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. I was just going to ask if that was a, a kiss. Oh, 94 on Alcorn, really? Well, that's what he's walking over going, me? <laughs> 94. I wasn't even in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's the horse. Oh, yeah. Coming. He grabbed him by the back of the net like a cat and just kind of started trying to drag him down there. That was not Tiller, though. Mm -mm. It was not Tiller. First down and 10, and now an opportunity for Alcorn maybe to run some time off that clock. Handoff given to Turner. He needs a yard to hit 200. Maybe a, no, no game. Second and ten, and that clock continues to run, and that's what Southern does not want to do. And pretty soon, they're going to have to make a stop here and make Alcorn kick the ball. Otherwise, they're going to have to start using timeouts. Still manageable, under six minutes now, but got to be real careful. And if you're Southern, you need a couple of scores to get back into the contest. They've got time, but time is running out. And if you allow a first down or two, and Turner struggling to pick up that yard to get him to the 200 mark. His 14 previous carries Turner, netted 199. His last two, nothing. It is third down and 10. Coming into the season, the pick to finish atop the East, Alcorn. The team picked to finish two in the West, Southern. Footman on the delay, and he will go down. Ooh. There's a lot of massive people just falling on poor Footman, and now they're going to use a timeout. Including Contavious Preston, who snuck it out. Timeout, Southern. Their first. Got a time out of the field. We will take the break as well. Inside five to go. Swag Digital Network on a Saturday night. I'm Coach Fred McNair, All Corn State, and you're watching Swag Digital Network. Ran for Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. One more showdown to rule them all. Be there as the crowd roars in excitement. Ten teams battle it out to become champion. In the end, only one will stand victorious. Are you ready to witness final judgment? The 2017 Toyota SWAC Football Championship. Be a part of the action at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas on December 2nd. Get your tickets now at SWAC.org. McCaw ready to kick it away. Aims it in the direction of Johnson. High spiraling kick that winds up in Johnson's mitts at the 10. Over to the 20. Still on his feet. Got some blockers out in front of him. Midfield before he will step out of bounds. And Southern ain't through with this one yet. Johnson making his way to midfield. Of course, Johnson, one of two players highlighted in pregame. Two guys that we expected to contribute. Danny Johnson was one, and Lenoris Footman was the other. And here's what Danny Johnson does so well. 
able to make his way to midfield and that's where the Jaguars will take over first down and 10 with four minutes 34 seconds remaining in Santori and there's still time for an Austin Howard led squad to get back into this one still a little time but you got to make something happen here 434 you got to get the ball down the field in the end zone and get the ball back Howard trying to use some of that quick strike stuff Catch was made by out of bounds to, I believe it is Washington that made the reception over on the far sidelines and gained seven second and short at the 45. Ooh, a little bit high. Fires incomplete intended for Brown. Bernard, by the way, who went out with the Leg injury, five receptions, 47 yards. Yeah, they're going to miss him a little bit. Size, obviously, he's six foot five. He can create some separation, so they're going to miss that. He talked about the injury to Austin Howard and whether he was going to play or not, and now he's lost one of his favorite weapons. So injuries taking their tolls on the Jaguars as Howard will fire over the middle, complete. And that pass caught and by Beard. Turns into a first down, and the chains will move. Beard coming into the game, averaging 12.6 yards a catch. 63 yards on the season. But again, Menard second on the team in receiving yards, which wasn't a whole heck of a lot, but still 44 yards on the year, averaging 14.7 a game. And he was really yeah. instrumental in this game. And that's usually how it is, is that you keep on going throughout the course of the season. Those targets get better. And Menard was tied for first in the team in receiving coming into the fourth quarter. Great job by Howard just to bring down the high snap. Got him into the gun to Ben. Ben picking up six. And that's on there. Yeah, that clock has to be ticking in your head to let you know that that pocket is collapsing. Austin Howard had nowhere to go with that football. And you could just see that clock ticking and the pocket collapsing more and more. And now all of a sudden, Nothing doing, and it's a uh, third down and long here. And you're four down territory, 316 left. Got to get inside the 25 to pick up the first. Howard throws towards the end zone. There's contact, and there's an incomplete pass. No flags come out. You know, it's got to be frustrating for Howard now. Obviously, three, 260 yards through three quarters of play. He's played excellent especially considering the injury, but it's got to be frustrating to him that running the football is an absolute non-option. Yeah. Timeout, Alcorn State. Their third and final use timeout of regulation play. Braves asking for the timeout with 3.04 to go. Still a chance for Southern. Can they do it? We'll find out when we come back. This is Coach Oden, the head football coach of Southern University, and you're watching the SWAT Digital Network. Get ready, Houston, for the 2017 Toyota Swag Football Championship. Saturday, December 2nd, inside the NRG Stadium, where the Eastern Division champs will take on the Western Division champs for the final victory. With Ro Timmy from the hit show Power, will open with a national anthem, along with Grammy-nominated The Voice contestant Tamar Davis, hosted by Vic Tigger and Tracy Steele, and the post-concert performance by Maze, featuring Frankie Beverly at NRG Stadium. Witness the final day of judgment, where a legend will rise. For tickets and more information, go online to swagfootball.com. Fourth down, and this might be it for Howard. If you don't pick up the first, his Jaguars might not have a chance in this one with 3.04 to go. Yeah, you know what? The, the biggest thing now that, that Southern can do, you just got to get a first down. That's the start. It's fourth down and seven or fourth down and six. This is the game. And Howard is dropped. Inability to run the football. Many could not scramble for the necessary six. Yep, Alcorn's defense doing a great job covering downfield. There was no one open. You can see the blitz coming a little bit here, especially on that edge, top of the screen. Here comes that blitz, and Howard has nowhere to go. So look how small that pocket is. He tried to escape, and there's just, there's just purple shirts everywhere. 
He has nowhere to go, and so now Alcorn with, uh, what, 258. Southern's going to have to start using timeouts. They've got two left. And we see somewhat of a mass exodus on the other side of the football field as many of the Jaguar fans are thinking, well, that was the last chance. Inside, three minutes left to play. Well, one of the things we don't know, we now do. Can he get 200? And he can. Yep. So Lance Turner on the 10-yard gainer, better than 200 on the night. First down, and of course, once the ball is placed, and the clock starts running. We do not know all of the performances of the Southwestern Athletic Conference performers tonight. But I got to believe this one by Delance Turner with right at 210 yards. Got to rank amongst the top. Yeah, you had a couple of guys. Um, I think Tillery to add a couple of nights, you know, last year against with Southern University. He had a couple of, of big nights. Um, man. 200 yard, 200 yard games rushing the football. Yep. It's, it, it's a little rare. Timeout. Southern University, their second charge timeout. I'm trying to think of some other guys that uh, had some 200 yard games in the uh, conference. Um, you can go back to the to the 90s. I know for certain you can go back to there. You got guys like Eric Gant with Grambling who uh, was, was extremely good. Did you have a Graham kid at Grambling, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago that rushed for maybe about 170, 180? Really close, and I can't remember his last name, but, it was, but yeah, he was he was good. And um, you've had a couple of guys at Jackson, but that was late 90s, early 2000s, who were, who were really, really good. Um, but, yeah, you know, this is, this is big for Delance Turner. I don't. I mean, we're going to move back and look at some of the stats here, but I can't remember the last time you had a 200-yard game rushing, um, you know, for Alcorn especially. Southern taking the timeout with 2.11 to play. They have one more timeout to expend. And now you're in that mode if you are Southern, just hoping something will happen. Somebody will drop the football, will strip them of the football. They're not going to throw. Footman is... Probably not putting it upstairs again tonight. He no. will finish with right at 50 yards on the night passing. Who would have thunk it? You said Friday, of course, that's got soccer. Howard against Mississippi Valley. And then Monday, October the 2nd, Texas Southern will visit Grambling. That's right, in volleyball. Swag Digital Network very busy as Turner powers his way into Southern Territory, and now Southern will exercise the last time out. Timeout, Southern. The third and final charge timeout for regulation play. Well, we've got a timeout. Let's take the break as well. 2.04 to go. It's like a Braves victory. Not quite in the back, but close. Future starts today. With 34 undergraduate programs and 22 graduate programs, Finding your career path is within your reach at Southern University and A&M College. The best way to a successful future is to invest in it through an affordable education at Southern University. Southern University is growing in order to lead you to a bright future. Start your future here, here at Southern University and A&M College. A wise man once said, you can kill a man, but you can't kill an idea. What he meant was that knowledge is eternal. It's a lesson learned, a goal achieved, and it can be passed on from generation to generation, just like it is every day at Alcorn. Both knowledge and the character it takes to use it wisely. Alcorn, where knowledge and character matter. Third down four, no more timeouts available for Southern. And they're going to have to rely on a turnover to have any possibility of coming back in this one. And Turner says, don't think so. How about another TD and how about another 50 yards tacked on to my 200 plus night? Swag Offensive Player of the Week and making a case for HBCU National Player of the Week 
he gets my vote after a stellar evening. DeLance Turner once again, and that offensive line for all four, look at what they did, just blowing up the defensive line, and then it was all Turner all night. Turner going, hitting pay dirt again. There are going to be teams that are going to look at this tape and they are going to have nightmares about him. Icing on the cake for the Alcorn Braves as Turner has done it again. And you said it, they weren't, you knew they weren't going to pass the football. They were yeah. going to run the football. And that platoon that typically comes out and does a push up per point, they're like, you know, 47, that's just too much. Can't do it. Through the uprights. 48-31. That bag's open and a victory is now in it for the Braves. With a minute 56 to go. I'm Coach Fred McNair, All Corner State. And you're watching the SWAC Digital Network. Ram 4. Toyota Safety Sense Standard. Toyota, let's go places. One more showdown to rule them all. Be there as the crowd roars in excitement. Ten teams battle it out to become champion. In the end, only one will stand victorious. Are you ready to witness final judgment? The 2017 Toyota SWAC Football Championship. Be a part of the action at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas on December 2nd. Get your tickets now at SWAC.org. 48-31. The squib kick. It will be retrieved by Beard, and Beard will go down to the 40. Well, Southern University, they're going to lose this game, but I think that, uh, that you, you can look at a couple of different ways here. Obviously, the biggest thing is, you know, your thoughts go out to uh, Randall Menard, nasty leg injury. And so, you know, you're thinking about that going into next week. What's the health of Austin Howard? Uh, obviously, because he played, you know, played pretty decently today. I don't think there's a question about that, but what is his health? School and then, Jackson, you know, that, that's the question. Well, they have got him out of the lineup now. Glendon McDaniel, who came in for one play earlier in the game when Howard was sacked way back in the first. As a matter of fact, was on the opening drive of the night. And off given to Ben and you know Ben's performance has been overshadowed by the 200 plus from Turner. Ben's had a big night. He really has and you know what that's another positive there. If you are uh, if you're Southern University Ben a very good night. Everybody was looking uh, to you know Herb Edwards. He was the big running back that people you know he was a, obviously a good runner but Ben has been a, a true soldier tonight for Southern University and give him credit. They hung in there. And i given to Horton, and Horton will be close to a southern first down. And before we let you go this evening, final scores, and this one just came in, and you heard a roar from the crowd. Jackson had Pond Bluff 27-24 overtime. Pond Bluff beats Jackson at Jackson wow. 34-27. That's a huge win for Monty yep. Coleman on the road. Huge win. All of a sudden, they've kind of poked their name into consideration among the uh, league leaders. Yep. And now uh, Prairie View running away with the game against Alabama State, 28 to nothing. That kind of adds a little bit of fuel to the fire because Prairie View, one of those teams that you kind of thought maybe they could make a little bit of a run. They're shutting out Alabama State right now in Montgomery, 28 to nothing. And then, of course, uh, we told you about Alabama A&M. They went at home in the, uh, I believe it was at the, the uh, the, one of the classics that they have over there, 30 to 13 was the final there, and then Grambling they beat Mississippi Valley 38 to six was the final. Horton picking up the first down, 
Lyndon McDaniel, 39% of his passes have been completion, 77 yards total coming into the day. Relieving Howard. And on the quarterback draw, we'll pick up four. Well, let me take the opportunity as we near the end of the broadcast to say a huge thanks to a lot of people that do a lot of work behind the scenes to make our coverage possible. Of course, Commissioner Dewar Sharp of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Andrew Gant, Peter Holohan, all playing such a big role. Thank you very much to all for the opportunity to broadcast. And, of course, uh, during the course of the week, Alcorn and Southern have been so instrumental in getting information our direction as the pass is complete to Mackey. And then, of course, got to say kudos to James Crenshaw. James has produced two games today. That's tough. Did one uh, remotely that was being played in Georgia. And then, of course, this one tonight. So great job, James. And of course, Santoria, always great working with you. Absolutely. Been great. Been a great game in the nine seconds remaining of the game. And it is over here. And Alcorn getting a big win. Southern with a loss. But I tell you what, I think they can come away with this game. Having a few questions answered and some positive things come out of this contest for them as well. Both squads with an opportunity to take the next seven days to reevaluate and then uh, get ready for a matchup for Southern. They will take on Fort Valley State in Baton Rouge at 6 o'clock next week. And meanwhile, for Alcorn, it is a date with Texas Southern in Houston on the 29th. Well, this one is final. It is a victory that belongs to the Braves. It was hard fought to begin with, and as a matter of fact, might have been points of the game where it looked in doubt, but they win it 48-31. Thanks for watching the coverage. James Crenshaw, your producer. Centoria Black, your color analyst on this Saturday night. I'm Robert Williamson. Thank you for watching the SWAC Digital Network.